you know, when we have a couple that come together, generally the Prophet ﷺ used to advise or seize the opportunity to advise on an occasion where people gathered. So people gathered, for example, like this nikah, and the Prophet ﷺ would tell them to be conscious of Allah. He would read a few verses of the Quran. He would address the youth. Ya ma'ashara shababa man istata'a min kumul ba'ata falya tazawwaj. Increasing uh, the encouragement of getting married to say, if you're able and capable, don't delay, get married. And at the same time, make it easy for your children to get married because that is within the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the issue of taqwa is very important. It is repeated in most of the verses and especially the verses of Khutbatul Haja, which at times is also uh, recited during a khutbah as, of nikah when it comes to advising the people and so on. So you look at taqwa, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu taqullah. O you who believe, develop the taqwa of Allah. Taqwa itself is an encyclopedia of meaning. And primarily it's developing the correct relationship with Allah, having enough fear that would keep you away from sin and having enough hope that would make you, uh, you know, turn to him at all times, having enough love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that would make you do the right things, obey his instruction and command. If we have those qualities, when we get married, nothing can go wrong. Nothing can actually go wrong when you have taqwa. Because taqwa is the cornerstone of everything and everything good. And taqwa is the main ingredient of ultimate success in the dunya as well as in the akhirah. So remember, our lives should be a journey of development of taqwa. That's the life. My life from the beginning of my understanding age right to the end where I die should be the development of taqwa, the betterment of it, the consciousness of how much consciousness I have of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what would bring about goodness and happiness. More so when we are coming together in such a sacred union that the rest of our future is determined upon what happens thereafter. This is why the choice of a spouse is very important in Islam because your future depends on the type of choices you make that Allah has allowed you to make. Obviously, people say, well, it's written by Allah. Remember, the writing by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not necessarily mean he imposed it on you, but rather he gave you a leeway and a choice in certain matters. And that's what he's going to ask you about. So Allah is going to ask you and I how you use the choices. You had to choose a spouse. Did you choose someone who was respectful on both sides? Are you going to respect them so that your children can learn the respect and learn the uh, duties they have unto Allah, will you be fulfilling your ibadah together so that your children, your offspring, the families and everyone around you can learn from you and you can become lilmuttaqina imama, you can become a leader of the righteous. If you are not righteous, how will your children be righteous? If you are not respectful, how will your children be respectful? If you don't say the right things with your mouth in terms of dhikr, Quran, goodness, teaching goodness, and even saying words of love and kindness to those around you, how are people going to learn from you? So it's very important to highlight this matter upon the nikah, my dear son and my beloved daughter.